Come on, come on, come on. Show God you love him. Hallelujah. Love is an action. Hallelujah. Love is an action. Hallelujah. Show God that you love him on this morning. Hallelujah. Show God that you need him on this morning. Hallelujah. Show him that you truly want him on tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. We're going to get to the word, but let's show God that we really need him. Hallelujah. Because this is for him. Hallelujah. This ain't for me. Hallelujah. But this is for God. Hallelujah. Show God that you truly love him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Show him that he's worthy on this afternoon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is worthy. Hallelujah. God is worthy. And we do need Jesus on today. Amen. Is anybody that really need Jesus on today? I don't mean need him, but do somebody really, really, really need Jesus on today? And somebody just, just desperate for Jesus on today wouldn't do anything. Hallelujah. God has been good to us. Amen. God has been real good to us. Hallelujah. You ought to lift your hands and give God the highest praise. Can we give God the highest praise? Hallelujah. 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 Can we lift up the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Because he is worthy. Hallelujah. 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 We do thank. We do honor God on today. Amen. Hallelujah. As the head of our lives. Hallelujah. We do honor our apostle. Hallelujah. Apostle C.A. Coward. We do honor our board of bishops. Hallelujah. Our, board, our, our presiding bishop, Bishop Ira J. McLeod, our district overseer, Overseer Kevin Williams, hallelujah, our district elder, Elder Andrew Johnson, amen. We certainly want to honor our pastor in his absence, amen, yeah. Pastor Eli Porter, senior, hallelujah. We do thank God for the men of God in the pulpit with me on today, amen. Yeah. Amen. We do like to give honor to you all that made it out on today, amen. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Last but not least, I'd like to give honor to my wife, hallelujah. Yeah. In the back corner, hallelujah, that's my rib. Hallelujah, God, she keep me together, amen. I might look like I'm together, but it's because she keep me together, amen. Hallelujah, I don't know what I'd do without her, amen. Hallelujah, you might not know what I'm talking about, but you'll get there one day, hallelujah. But I love her and I need her, amen. Amen, I'm going to ask if you can all continue to stand with me and follow me, please, to the book of Matthew, chapter 22. Hallelujah. I do believe there is a word for you all on today. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Matthew 22, and please hear the first verse. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables mm -hmm. and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king. The kingdom of heaven is like unto this, uh huh. Which made a marriage for his son. Mm hmm. And sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. So God is calling, uh-huh. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, mm -hmm. and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. Mm. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. He sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Uh -huh. Then said he to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways. Go ye therefore into the highways. And as many as ye shall find. And whoever you shall find. Bid them to the marriage. Tell them to come unto me. So those servants went out into the highways. Uh -huh. And gathered together all as many as they found. And they looked and found as many as they found. If I had a topic for the message on today, it would be, will you take my hand in marriage? My God. Will you take my hand in marriage? You all may be seated. Hallelujah. We're living in a time today where people are running from holy matrimony with God. 
Amen. God is calling for his people to come unto him because he has prepared something for us. Amen. But the world that we live in now tells us that God isn't the way we ought to go. The world tells us now that that's not who we ought to devote our lives into. Amen. We live in a world that doesn't believe in a monogamous relationship. Don't believe in, in, in being able to settle down with one person and be with that one person for your whole life. We, we live in a world that just don't believe these things. And it's evident because if you look into the world nowadays, it seems as if the divorce rate is higher than people that's even getting married. The second somebody get married is two people getting divorced. And so the world is showing us that, that we shouldn't look to settle down with one person. But I come to tell you that God is looking for somebody that's willing to settle down with him. God is looking for somebody that don't mind him being the apple of their eye. The one that they think about when they wake up and the last person they think about when they go to sleep. God is looking for somebody that just don't mind being married unto him. God looking for somebody that don't mind giving their all unto him, not looking for something in return. Even though we know we serve a God that will give you everything you need. You see, we, we live in a world where, where people don't like putting in no effort into a relationship. And we serve a God that say, you ain't even got to give me half, just give me something. And I can work with that. You see, the world say a relationship ought to be 50-50, the husband ought to give some and the and the wife ought to be able to give the other half, but, but God said, I, don't, I, I just don't need 50%. Yeah. God said, just give me something that I can work with, and I'll take it. Yeah. We serve a God that's not looking for perfection. We serve a God that's not looking for you to be all the way together when you come unto him. Yeah. God says, let me be the one to groom you. Let me be the one to get you where I want you to be. You see, because God already has a will out for each and every one of our lives. And though we may not see it, that does not mean that it's not present and that it's not actively working. You see, sometimes we can only see the piece of the puzzle, but God has already seen the whole puzzle. Because the word says that he is the author and the, the finisher of our faith. So your whole life has already been mapped out and God has seen who you were when you started his life and who you're going to be when the day you leave it. But see, we only know what we see day by day. But God says, but just come unto me and trust me and just to take my hand. Amen. Let's turn to Isaiah 35 and 8. You see, because they said that, that there were some people in the beginning that, that God had already sent out invites to to come unto this wedding. He said, I've already made an invite list, but but the people that I wanted to come, they just didn't come. I sent out invites into this city. I, I sent invites into that city. I sent, I requested people over there and over here. But, but why don't people want to come into this wedding with me? God says, I have prepared some good food for you to eat. I have prepared these things for you, those that are coming. But they, 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 they just didn't want to come. So God says, I have I have a selected group of people that I want to come, but now because they don't want it, just go out into the highways and the byways and just find me somebody that just don't mind being married to me. Find somebody that just don't mind giving it all away and just coming unto me. Amen. Isaiah 35 and 8. And a highway shall be there. And a highway shall be there. And a way. And a way. And it shall be called. The way of holiness. So God has showed us that there are two ways that we can travel upon. It's a highway that got many ways to go, many directions, yes. many starts and many finishes. But then he says, but there is a way of holiness. The way that he has called us unto. But see, it seems as if those that have been on the way of holiness have not stayed on that way of holiness. You see, because those that were on that way of holiness, God said, I'm going to send you an invite to come unto me into my wedding. Mm -hmm. But even some that were on that way, they, they lost their way mm -hmm. and went from the way to now they own the highways. Yeah. You see, but it's okay because God said, I still want you. I, I, I still need you to come unto me. Yeah. You see, because even when they, they didn't initially come that was first invited, God said, it's okay. 
I know you're not where you should be, and you have fallen back into that, that highway place, but it's okay. I'm going to still send some people out into those highways just to bring you back. Amen. You see, because just as much as you want to be, you know, in a relationship with somebody, God wants us the same way. Amen. God made us for him. Yes, he did. So God said, I will do whatever it takes, but, but, but just come unto me and, and just love me. God says, I am a God that will never leave nor forsake you. Yes. God says, I'm a provider. I'm a shelter. God says, I can make a way when you can't even see the way. God says that I am able even when you don't think that I am. I'm still able. And so God has shown himself to be such a great God, but, but why is it that we just, we just don't want to give in to him? Why is it that we, we just don't want to let our life bloom in him? Amen. And, and it's because of the system that Satan has created in this world. That everything that God stands for, Satan is the exact opposite. God believes in, to, uh, in, believe in us being sold out for him, but Satan says be sold out for everything else. Amen. Don't just be sold out for one God, but be sold out for all the things that you can create to be God's in your life. Hallelujah. But God wants us to come unto him, so there is a way and there is a highway. Hallelujah, and I come to tell you, even if you have found yourself on that highway, it's okay because God is still coming. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we read, oh, go back to Matthew 22. Matthew 22, and start back at verse 9. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, mm -hmm. bid to the marriage. As many as you shall find on the highways, at this point, God says, I, I, I just don't even care who you find. Just find somebody that don't mind coming. Mm, I had some people before that I wanted to come, but now they, they just didn't appreciate me the way they ought to have appreciated me. Yes. But now he says, just, just go out into the world and just find anybody that want to come. Uh -huh. So those servants went out they went the out, highway uh -huh. and gathered together. All, as many as they found. And so they went out there talking about Jesus and saying, is there anybody that don't mind being in love with this man named Jesus? Yes. Is there anybody that don't mind giving their life away for a man that can give you so much more life than you had? You see, we look at the life that we live now. We see the money. We see the, 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 the fame, the, the power, the respect that you get. But God says, are you willing to die to that life that I might give you more life and more abundantly? You see, because the life that God gives us, we might not necessarily be able to see naturally. Right. But we got to be able to get to a spiritual place where we look beyond the physical. We look beyond the, the, the nice car that you're driving. Look beyond the nice clothes that you wear. Look beyond them red bottoms and say, Lord, am I really living for you? Yes. You see, because we live in a generation now that, that say, well, you know I'm living for God if I got a nice suit on, a nice tie, nice pair of slacks, a nice, a nice church dress. And we say, if I look like I'm living for God, then I must be living for God. Yes. You see, but it was, it was a passage of scripture where, where Jesus was talking to the Pharisees and said, inside, the cup, inside of your cup is wicked yes. and it's dirty. But man, you got the outside dressed up real nice. Yes. How often are we coming out into this world dressed up real nice, dressed up real elegant, looking like we saved, but inside we not saved at all. And you see, it can be such a dangerous place to be in because you might even confuse your own self. Come on. Sometimes you'll fake the funk so long that you'll believe it. Yes, Come on now, that's dangerous. Yes. You'll fake for so long that you'll believe your own lie. My God. To think, oh, I'm, I'm, I am really saved. I'm in the church all the time, and I'm doing this and doing that. And, but are you really living saved for real? Do you really have a relationship with God to where God can say, well done, my good and faithful servant? Are you really working in the kingdom as you ought to? You see, we ought to really be able to self-examine ourselves sometimes because sometimes we give ourselves a little bit too much credit. And I'm not here to knock anybody and say that we, that we fake in the funk, but, but if you felt some type of way when I said it, then it might have been you. You see, because we fake the funk for people around us to see, but, but the one who really matters, he, he sees the faith. You see, what sense does it make for me to wear a nice, a nice suit 
knowing that I'm not saved, though, therefore for others to see that I'm saved, but, but you're not going to be there when I'm, when I'm going before God for judgment. You can't defend me before God when I got to go before his throne. When God comes to ask me about all that I did, he's not going to say, well, let me ask Brother Ron to see if he can defend you. No. God is coming to you. So don't look for, for, for validation for things that you have and these materialistic things because heaven and earth shall pass away. So that same outfit you think is, is, is making you think you saved, that's going to go away. But what's going to really keep you is that word, and that word got to be in us. Amen. Amen. Keep reading. Both bad and good. So he said both bad and good. So God says, I'm not just looking for the folks that got it all together to come unto me. I, I, I need some bad folks too. I need some people that, that, that strung out on drugs. I need some people that's, that's prostituting their body. I need some people that can't even help themselves to also come unto me. You see, and one thing about the church is that we like to dress ourselves up and the people that really don't have it feel as if, well, I, I can't be around those people. I mean, look at me. I got, I got scars all over my body from shooting up drugs. I, I can't even really present myself the way everybody else is. But God says, I'm not looking for that. God says, just come unto me. God says, bring your addiction with you and let me fix it. It's the nights when you ain't got much to eat and you hungry. Guys, I've already prepared a meal for you. Just come and eat. Just come sit at the table with me and eat. But how often times do we push God away because our life feels like it's already good? We feel as if, well, I'm already blessed, so, so I'm, I'm already here. But are you really here? Do you just come to church Sunday to Sunday just because you know you ought to be in church on Sunday? Or are you coming looking for something from God? You see, because one thing about a relationship with another person is, is, is that I'm looking for something out of, out of you. I look to receive something from my wife just as if I expect her to receive something from me. I expect her to love me because she is my wife. Just as I am expected to love her. So God says, if you would just, listen, God, and the thing about it is, is, is the crazy thing is that God already loves us no matter what condition you in. So God has said, I have already given out my part. I'm loving you. But see, sometimes we're not in a place to see God's love. We're not in a place to feel God's love, not in a mind space to be able to receive it. Because sometimes some of us can be so hurt from things in the world that we just can't really accept God's love. We can be hurt from past relationships. You a woman had a relationship with a man and he hurt you so bad and did you wrong. And so now you just feel like you can't really accept love from nobody like that no more. Got a wall built up to where I just can't let a man into my heart anymore because I, I was hurt so bad before that I just can't. I can't trust another man like I did before because he, he broke in my trust. And so now you have received that natural breaking, and now we're saying, but trust in the God that you just can't see. Yeah. Now we're asking you to trust in the God that you have to believe that is real according to this word. But I come to tell you, just as real as I am on today, God is real. Yeah. And I have seen him move in ways that were undescribable, that could only be but by God. And so Jesus said, just come unto me. Just come. I know it may be hard to take that first step. I know it may be hard to trust in another man again, but, but put your trust in me and I'll show you that I won't fail. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's turn to Matthew 11. You see, because it takes a relationship to be able to trust in somebody. You see, you can't expect me to go out onto the, onto the streets and, and walk up to a random person and give them my whole bank account and trust that if I say, hey, be back here with my money tomorrow, that they're going to still be here with it. I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure if I, if I put $1,000 in the man's hand and say, can I trust that you'll be here tomorrow, he probably won't be here tomorrow. He probably don't want to bought him some new clothes, a nice, a nice good meal, and I won't see him ever again. But it takes a relationship to be able to have that trust in someone. Matthew 11 and 28. Come unto me. Come unto me. All ye uh -huh. that labor and are heavy laden. So he says, come unto me, all ye that are heavy. Uh huh. And I will give you rest. He said, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke. And learn of me. And learn of me. So. 
So Christ is saying, listen, just as if in a marriage, before you get married to somebody, I will hope that you will learn of that person before you get involved in that. You see, because marriage is something that's very, very serious and ought to be taken seriously. You see, because love is a very powerful thing, but it can also be very dangerous if it's used the wrong way. You see, when you use love the wrong way, you can get people messed up. So God says, before you put your love into certain things, learn of it. God says, yes, I'm calling you unto this marriage, but if you don't feel trustworthy right now, then just learn of me. Learn of what they have said about me in the streets. Y'all talk to me now. Hear about what, hear about what they say about me in the streets, about what they say about can, what Jesus can do. You'll find out that my name hold weight. Come on, y'all talk to me. You'll find out that my name holds some weight. That whatever you need me to do, that I can do it. Go find such and such and, and, and let them tell you about what I did for them. Not the bro said bad, but, but, but I'm God. But just, just, just go, go learn of me so that way when I come unto you willing to give you something that you'll receive it. Because sometimes we'll miss out on something so good just because we don't know enough about it. And one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to miss out on God just because I just don't know enough about what he can do for me. God created this whole entire universe, and we think that he can't put a little money in our pocket when we, when we get a little down. God created us, and we think that when we get down and depressed that God can't give us joy. And I know it's hard because, again, it's a God that we cannot see. But we saying that we got to believe in this power above that we have never seen. But we got to believe that he can do all these things that the word say he's done. But if you have but just a little bit of faith, you'll see just how much God will move. You see, God didn't say I need a whole bunch of faith. He said, just give me a little bit. God can work with a little bit. Because he'll take that little bit and he'll make it a lot. Amen. Where I got you at? Read uh, 29 again. Take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you. And learn of me. And learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. So God is saying, I need you to come into this wedding, and I have already prepared a meal for you. I have clothes for you to wear. God says, I'm ready to groom you to where you can look your best at this wedding. But see, sometimes along that process, God wants to take some things off of us so that he can put his things on. You see, God don't God, God, God will come and get a sinner. God will come and get someone that's good. God will come get someone that's clean and come get you that's dirty. But, but God says, I just don't want you to stay dirty when it's time for the marriage. When it's time for that holy matrimony, I hope that you will have taken my yoke upon you and learned of me so you can see how you can be presented before me. Amen. Let's go back to Matthew 22. Because I don't know about you, but I won't, I, I, I'm going to take God's hand in holy matrimony. Amen. And I won't let anything in this world stop me from loving God with all that I have. Amen. 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 Matthew 22. And let's go back to, start at 10. So those servants went out into the highways mm -hmm. and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. Both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. Uh huh. And when the king came to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. So he said, I seen somebody that didn't have on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, uh -huh. friend, how camest thou in hither? Not having a wedding garment. So he asked me, he said, how did you get in here not having a wedding garment? Because I know that when I sent my people out to find somebody to come into the wedding, I know you may not have had the garment then, but you, you, you ought to have had it when it was time for us to, to come together. Yeah. So, but it was a man that was in there that happened to make his way in there, but not having a garment. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking about this garment. And I said, Lord, what, what, what's so significant about this garment? What is so, so important that they had to have this garment upon the wedding? Mm -hmm. Amen. And so I was thinking about how, the, how, how God wants us, how the Bible says us to lay aside every weight yeah. and every sin with doth easily beset us. And I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I was thinking about how we can carry 
so much things upon ourselves that God wants us to take off. So God is saying that there is a lifestyle that we have lived upon coming unto him that he says, listen, leave that garment behind. Let the past be the past, the past hurt, the past pain, the alcoholic, the smoker, the drinker. Let, just, just let that garment go, and, and I have a new garment that I want to give unto you. And so I was thinking about why, why, why didn't this man have on the right garment? Because I'm pretty sure that along that way of him getting there, somebody had to have told him about what God wants from us. Yes. About what Jesus asked for us to be and what he wants us to do. Amen. And so that garment was just sticking with me. And so then in that moment, I was thinking about how the Bible talks about when we are baptized into Christ, we put on Christ. Yes, sir. So, so God saying is to put the old you aside and then put me on. Amen. Let's go to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 6. You see, because it's something that's so significant about baptism that allows us to get to that place in marriage with God. Amen. Romans chapter 6. And start at verse 1. What shall we say then? Uh huh. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Mm -hmm. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism. Buried into with death. him by baptism, uh-huh. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So it says, even so we, ought, we shall walk in the newness of life. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says that upon being baptized... It allows you to walk in the newness of life. Yes. And it says that being baptized is synonymous to a death. Mm -hmm. So God is saying that this baptism that you take upon yourself, it shall allow you to die to that life that you lived before. That life of a drunk, that life of alcoholic, of a, a smoker, all these different things. God said that baptism allows you to walk in the newness of life. Amen. In the book of Galatians, it says, for as many have been baptized into Christ, put on Christ. And you see, so, and, and one thing about a marriage is that the wife will carry something upon being married into her husband. You see, you ought to be changed when you get married. Let me tell you why. Because when a woman gets married to her husband, her last name changed. So it should be something different about you when you carry something else. So God says, I'm allowing you to carry me now, so now your name ought to change. So when people called you that drunk, you're not that no more. I'm carrying Jesus. When people called you a, a weed smoker, I'm not that no more. I, I, I carry Jesus. When people called you an abuser, I'm not that no more. They called you an attitude problem, I'm not that no more. I'm carrying Jesus now. You see, when you come into a marriage, there ought to be something out to change. And, and the Bible says that we are the bride of Christ. So us being the bride of Christ, there ought to be a change in our name. So what you went by before, don't go by that no more because that's not me. That name you had that correlated you all these different gangs and this and this and that lifestyle before. Of poverty. I'm not that no more. I'm blessed. I'm not broke no more. I'm blessed because I'm under a, a, a father that that will never leave nor forsake me. He said he will pour out a blessing from heaven. Hallelujah. So 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 now that I have walked into this newness of life and now that I'm carrying something different now, I am different now. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to Mark 10. And 46. I don't plan to be before you too much longer, but I believe that God has a word for you. Amen. Amen. And I hope I'm helping somebody already. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Mark 10 and 46. And, and, and when I read this scripture, this, this thing messed me up. <laughs> the way God was speaking. Mark 10 and 46. And they came to Jericho. Uh -huh. And as he went out to Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Barnabas, 
the son of Timaeus said, sat by the highway side. So he sat by the highway. And so when we go back to Matthew, God says, I'm going to go out into the highways. Because the people that was, that was close to me, they, 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 they didn't want it. So let me, let me go out into the highways and find somebody that needs something from me. Amen. Keep reading. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. So when this man named Jesus came on walking by, it. it was a man on the highway that said, look, I, I, I need you. I know I might not be in the best condition. I might not be in the best place. But, Lord, have mercy on me because I need you. Keep reading. And when he, and many, I'm sorry, and many charged him that he should hold his peace. And they told him, they said, hey, be quiet. They, as he was calling out to God because he needed him, they told him to stop talking. Hold your peace and be quiet. How many times in our life have we tried to live our life for God and people around us say, hold your peace? Don't serve that God. Don't go to church. Don't live this life for God. But how many of us have still continued to live our life through it? Amen. That no matter what you say, I'm going to continue to serve God because I need something from God. Yes. Is there anybody really in need on today? I mean, really, you need them. I mean, if it's my mama that say stop going to church, mama, I love you, but but I can't. Because though I love you, it's a man named Jesus. That's, he's just a little bit greater than you, mama, and, and, and you just can't save me. Yes, I thank you because you brought me into this world and you, and you nurtured me and you took care of me. But now I need a man named Jesus that can save my soul. Y'all talk to me on this morning. Keep reading. But he cried. The more a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. So after they told him to stop, he said, listen, just because you told me to stop, I'm going to cry even louder. Yes. Because I want you to know that even though you're telling me to stop, I need Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Keep reading. And Jesus stood still. And his cry was so impactful that as God was walking by, it made him stop. Because I'm thinking, well, why would they have, if, if they told him to stop, apparently either Jesus asked him where to go, other business to attend to. So I don't believe Jesus planned to even stop. Oh God. Because the, 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 the disciples told him to hold his peace. Yes. So if they told him to hold his peace, it must have been something that was coming from God. That said, oh listen, God. just hold his peace and let's keep walking. So God is walking by. The man crying out. I believe God was still walking, but he cried even louder. And he said, wow, my disciples told him to hold his peace, but he cried even louder. It's something about this man that just intrigued me. Let me let me go let me go see about him. Uh huh. Keep reading. And commanded him to be called, and they called the blind man, saying unto him, "Be of good comfort. Rise. He calleth thee." And so we talking about a blind man that's on a highway, and I want you to think about a blind man that can't see. I need somebody to walk in the spirit with me. A blind man that can't see. Keep reading. And he and he. Casting away his garment. Casting away his garment. Rose. Rose. And came to Jesus. And came unto Jesus. My God. You see, so this man was blind and can't see. And not only was he blind and can't see, but he was in a, a, a low place. Yes. Because the Bible says that he cast his garment off and then rose up. Yes. So it don't matter if you in a down place, you down and bad, always looking from the bottom up. It don't matter. Keep on living because God is coming. It said that he, he came, he said, I cast in this garment off because I know that it's something that God got that he can cover me right back up with. Y'all talk to me. Keep reading. And Jesus answered and said unto him, what wilt thou that I should do unto thee? Uh huh. The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. That I might receive my sight. And so when I read this. Anybody would have said that he was a naturally blind man and he just couldn't see, you know, I got to walk and say I can't see. But but the Lord told me that I'm not I, I'm not really talking about a natural blindness. But God said this man was blind spiritually. And so when we think about the time when it said that the man was caught without his garment in the wedding, I thought, well, why wouldn't he have had his garment? So turn with me to the book of John three. The book of John, chapter three. Thank you, Jesus. 
And start at the first verse. Matter of fact, just go ahead and go to three. We'll start at one. Start at one. John 3 and 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, mm -hmm. a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, verily I say verily. unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So he says, except a man be born again, he cannot see. He cannot see the kingdom of God. So I was thinking that this was a blind man that said, I'm going to cast my old garment off and God, give me a spiritual sight. Give me something I can, where I, I, I can see the kingdom of God. He said, God, I know you said that I got to cast this old garment away. So, Lord, I'm, I'm in a low place now, but I'm going to take it off. And he said, well, what do you want me to do? Lord, let me see the kingdom of God. So he rose up and keep reading. Nicodemus saith unto him. Oh, go back, go back, go back to Mark 10. Mark 10 and start back where you left. Start at 51. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? Mm -hmm. The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. That I might receive my sight. Uh huh. And Jesus said unto him, uh -huh. Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. So Jesus said, I have given you your sight, now go your way. <laughs> Jesus said, Go ahead and go your way. You got what you needed, now go your way. But keep reading. And immediately he received his sight. And follow Jesus in the way. So Jesus told him to go his way. But he said, Lord, you just showed me where the kingdom was. You sh I can see the kingdom now. So I, I, I don't want to go my way. I got to follow you now. What, 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 why would I go my way when I just asked you to show me the way? And so in, in the book of John, Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. So after this man got his sight, he said, this is the way. So I don't, I, I, I don't want to go my way, but I want to go your way. So as soon as he got his sight, he said, okay, I got to follow after you. And so when I thought about it, I said, well, that, that, that's why there was a man in the wedding that didn't have his garment because he couldn't see. He couldn't tell that he was the only one that didn't have his garment on. And you say, well, what you mean he couldn't see? Well, how he get there? Well, I mean, I, I'm here now, I can see. But you can see nasty, but be, but be blind spiritually. Yes, so, yeah, I'm sure he was, he was there, but he could not tell that he didn't have the garment on. And so here comes Jesus saying that, do you not know that you ain't got on the garment? Why, 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 why you ain't got the garment on? Why, why, or why you don't have on this garment that you ought to have had? And the man stood there speechless. Nothing to say. So I come to ask you on today, are you going to come unto God without your garment? Will you walk this walk with God but never be baptized in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and receive your garment? Put on Christ. Amen. And it's not just getting baptized just to be able to be in the wedding, but it really changes you. Because now you're not walking blind anymore. Now you can, you can see a little different now. Amen. My last scripture, and I'm going and I'm out your way. Isaiah 59 and 1, and we can all stand. Isaiah 59 and 1. Behold. Behold. The Lord's hand. The Lord's is hand. Is not shortened, shortened, that it cannot save. God says. Will you take my hand in marriage? I, it, it don't matter where you are because my hand is not too short that I can't reach into any situation. Yes. Will you take my hand in marriage because there's nowhere that I can't go to come get you? God is saying, I'm just looking for a yes and I'll bring my hand to you because my hand is not too short. That it cannot save and my ear is not too heavy that I cannot hear. God is looking for people that don't mind just settling down with him. 
that don't mind being okay with just loving a God that you can't see. God is looking for some people that don't mind loving him even when the world say don't. And he don't care about your situation. He don't care about your circumstances. He don't care about how, how inconvenient your life may be, but he says just come. I know life is hard, but still come. I know you may not feel the best. You may be depressed, down, bad, broke, busted and disgusted, but God says still come. He says, I don't care if it's good or bad, but just come. Let me fix you up. Let me change you the way I want you to be. Because he said that he created us for him, so he know what's best for you that's best for him. Amen. Let us all lift our hands to God. And let's just talk to him. God really wants us to come unto him and just to love him for who he is. God says, I have been a good father. God says, I have been a mighty God. I'll never leave you no matter where you are. Even though you may have left me, I still won't leave you. You may have turned your back to me when I wanted you, but I still would never leave nor forsake you. I might not have been the best servant of God. I might not be in the best place I ought to be in you, God, but, but God, I want to be now. I know, God, that I haven't been doing the best things in life, things that are not pleasing unto you. But, God, I want to come now. God, I'm desperate now. God, I need your love all over me because sometimes I'm not getting that love nowhere else. God, I come to say that I want to take your hand in marriage. I want to come unto you in holy matrimony because your love is like no other love. No one can love me how you can love me. No one can can take care of me like you can. Those those nights when I was crying out and it was nobody there, Lord, but you can be there for me when I need you. To comfort me when I'm crying in my bed, but nobody else can hear me. To, to be there when nobody else knows that I'm in need of help. When I'm crying down on the, on the inside, silently, but God, you can still hear. God, I need that kind of love today. God, I need to come back unto you today. Hallelujah. If there's anybody on today that desire any prayer, you can come forth now and I'll pray with you. If there's anybody that feels as if they have left the way and found themselves upon that highway, God is saying, just come. God is saying, just come because I, 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 I still need you. God says, I, I, I still want you. I still desire you. Even when you don't feel worthy, God says, I still need you. Hallelujah. Just just lift our hands and let's just talk to him. Let's lift our hands unto God on tonight. Hallelujah. Let's just talk to him. Talk to him about what you need him to be in your life. What do you need from God? Hallelujah.